All right, so what we're going to do first today is we need to look... Let me... If your browser works, we can, we can work with that. What we're going to look at is uh, setting up our project to be able to be completed, to be able to be published. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the official documentation, the Cordova documentation. We'll look at that briefly, and then I've got a handout for you that kind of distills it a little bit better. If you go to cordova.apache.org, let's go to the Cordova homepage. We'll go to the documentation. Go to documentation. And at the moment, we're focusing on creating the Android version of the project because we've got Windows computers and we've got the SDK set up. But of course, we would go look at the iOS section to do what we're about to do here. Go to the Android, develop for platforms, and then go to signing an app. When we want to complete the project, we have to sign it. We're a developer, and we have to say, this is our app. We are the ones that are vouching for the project. This is our app. So let's go look at signing an app in the Android section. And you have something similar in OS, in iOS. So it's kind of wordy, of course. But the big idea is uh, we're going to do a command like this. And I've got it in a handout for you. But basically, we're going to run a version, a release-ready version. We've been running debug versions, versions that run on our device that are not ready for the app stores. So we're going to type like one final command to create a, a, a store-ready version of the project. And we can, of course, create as many as we want and upload as many as we want. So I think we're at a point where the app is minimal enough that we can release it. It still has some rough around the edges, which we can release for version 1.2. No problem. But I want to look at this process. Let's type this command, we release, we uh, apply our key store, etc. So there's the command, but that still needs some setup. We need a key store. A key store is a special file that sets, it's basically your certificate, your developer certificate, that says that I'm this developer and this is my app and I'm vouching for it. A little bit above it, there's a spot that says first you should read the Android app signing requirements. This is why I have a, a handout for you because we have to look at several pieces of two documentations for this to make sense, but I put it into one handout. If you take a quick look at the Android app signing requirements, this goes on for a while. So on the right side, on the table of contents of this document, build and sign your app from the command line. This is going to tell you how to do it inside of Android Studio, which we're not using. Android Studio only focuses on making an Android app. Cordova lets us create apps that are cross-platform. So in the command line section, it goes on that we need to create our developer certificate, our, um, our, our JKS file that vouches that this is who we are, that we're this developer. So we're going to use the command prompt to create this special file. Each of you will create it. You're going to keep your file. It's going to have your credentials, and it's going to show you as the developer. You don't want my file. Because then if you sign your app with my file, then you're saying, Victor created this app, not yourself. So we are going to create a, uh, an account at the app stores, and we could create it completely fake. We can make up an email, we can make up a company name, or a person's name, or whatever. Uh, or we'll make all of that up for educational purposes. This as well, we can make this up. It doesn't matter that you create this certificate and then you create another one next time. But when you want to release a real app for real, we're going to create this developer certificate and you want to save that file. You don't want to lose it, you don't want to recreate it because then you're a new developer. So, 
the distillation of what we need to do, I put it into a handout. If you look in the network folder, you want a copy of signing your final APK. Copy it to your flash drive and you can print it later. And we'll look at it a little bit later. We need to do a couple of things before we actually sign it to say our app is done. But this document basically is the document to say our app is done. What are the final things I need to do? So we'll come back to it. But this handout basically summarizes the Android document and the Cordova document. You can look at the full gory details there whenever you want, but my handout has it simplified. copy of that PDF, save it for the moment, we'll come back to it. We need to do a couple of things first. Open up your Explorer window and go to your Apps folder. So my project, your project go to the project that we've been working on and remember at the root level of your project you have a config XML file. You need to go back and edit that, especially if you've been copying my version. I've been putting my version in the network folder, you get a copy of it. You've been using a config file here with my credentials, basically. So we need to change a couple of things. Right-click, Edit Notepad, and let's edit the config XML file. So in the root of your project, you want to right-click config XML file and edit with Notepad++. Remember this, we looked at it a while ago, but this file has some of these basic important things. For example, the ID com.smith.template. That still says template from a while ago, even though we've been working on the official project. So here, again, for educational purposes, you can still make this up completely. But I would recommend that you call it your last name dot my SDCE. If everyone is going to go through the process of creating the my SDCE project, and you try to and I upload mine to the App Store and you try to upload yours and yours has the same ID as mine yours will be rejected every app in the App Store Android App Store iPhone App Store has to have some unique identifier so do not write jones.mysdce you write something else version this arbitrary number here doesn't matter but we we should put maybe the date onto it Today is 4.18. See that? We've got version 1.1.2017 or 4.18. Android version code 1. We're still going to leave that as 1. The point of that one is that this is the first version of the code we're uploading to the Android App Store. iOS CF Bundle 111. That's the first version of the code we're uploading to the iOS store. Android version code and CF bundle, iOS CF bundle, are more important for you to change than version. Version is almost just an arbitrary number that doesn't quite matter to the app stores. These two definitely matter. When we release version 2, that'll be 2 point whatever, and this should be 2. It should be 2.0, whatever. Let's say I release a, a small change. Okay, then I will do 1.2.2017.419. Okay, so it's a little change, but I would still increment that to 2. To 2. This document should not have comments, so don't write comments in this document. Write comments on elsewhere. The name of the app, it's it was my SDC temp. Let's call it your last name 
my SDCE temp. So this is going to be your version of the project. Description, our basic Cordova template with camera plugin. That's not a good description anymore. This is the unofficial, you can write the same one here if you want, the unofficial SDCE app. Yes? There was a moment where we added it to our template and you might have missed it. If it's missing, definitely put it in. Just type exactly what I have there, yeah. We've got a part for the developer. You can change, you should change that, right? You've got author, that makes sense what to put there. So change that author. You can make it up. You know, I don't, I don't actually have that website. Doesn't matter. Go to website. What's the name of my development company? I put Campus Apps or whatever. You can make that up on two. That doesn't matter. If this is just an educational, if this is an app for educational purposes, it doesn't quite matter that we upload this, but I want to go through the process of everyone having the experience of creating an app and uploading it to the App Store. <coughs> Eventually, then, you would do your version of the app with, with changes. What else do we have here? Description. What's that? I can't, I can't hear you, sorry. Can you write down the name? You, you should, yeah, this could be real or not. So you, you could write an email there, yes. Anything else does it matter? Uh, so email, href, the name of your company or not. Could be real or not, I mean. The most important one is that you have the a different ID than the one we've been using. And then your Android version code and CF bundle versions. Those names came from the original template that we created a while ago. A while ago we, we did Cordova create template. And we set up these basic parameters so that when we create a new project we just copy that template and change these things, especially the ID. The other thing we want to do is our template has access to all of the all of the um, plugins, the ability to take photos, the ability to check the person's contacts on their address book, all of these features which not every app needs. So we need to check what plugins that we have installed and remove the ones we don't need. The purpose of that is a person's going to download your app and it says this app is requesting these permissions. And it's going to ask for all of these permissions and people will say why does this app want to record audio and video? Is it going to spy on me? So we want to remove the plugins we don't need. The way we do that is open up your node command prompt and inside of node command prompt go to where your project is at mine's on my F drive in my apps folder inside of my SDCE and once you get into that folder you'll type Cordova plugins list Editing these basic aspects of the config XML file to make the project uniquely yours. And then inside of the folder of your project, we need to list the plugins we have installed and then remove the ones we don't want. So Cordova plugins list, press enter, 
In my case, it's showing all of these plugins. Vibrations, flash screen, file transfer, notifications, contacts, so a variety of, uh, of plugins. Our device, I mean, our app doesn't need to use a lot of them. So, whitelist, yes, that's like the most basic one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a list right here of the ones we don't need for our project. Does our project take photos? No. No, so we, I'm going to remove camera in a moment. Compat, plug-in compat. I think that's a new one. I need to look that one up. Let's leave it. Better safe than sorry, so we'll leave compat. Battery, that's the one about checking the battery status of our, of our device. We never really program that in. It doesn't do it. It might be a good idea to remove it. We don't need it. It also makes your app a little smaller. Console. We've used the console here and there to test our app while we develop it. Uh, I will leave that one, uh, although I could add it back later. So I'm going to leave console. Contacts. That's accessing contacts in the device. We don't need that one. Uh, device. We will use that one for version 2, so we'll leave it. But for version 1, we don't, we're not using it. And what that one does is to check various aspects of the device, such as operating system, version, and such. Later on, we will, we will have our app check what version of operating system is running to change our app based on the person's operating system, but not yet for version 1. Device motion, uh, we don't need that one. That one is dealing with acceleration, you know, the accelerometer and compass, that sort of thing. Device orientation is related. Uh, we do need device orientation because we've locked our app vertically, remember? In the config XML file, we said our app will stay vertical. Notification. This is one that's very popular that people ask about this one all the time. How do I make my app, you know, pop out a notification? Wait a minute, it's not that one. Notification is dialogues. Never mind, it's a different one. Uh, dialogues, that's what we do need. So you see, some of these have a name, like a friendly name, and then internally it's something else, so I got confused here. This one's not notification, like sending you alerts and such. This one is being able to use the dialog boxes, which we do use. File and file transfer. These uh, we're not using, we're not saving data like to a memory card. PouchDB is working in a different sort of way. So we don't need the file or file transfer. Right now I'm just making a list and then we'll remove them. We're not using geolocation at the moment, but we will. Uh, we're going to have a map that we will have uh, in our project a little later. Globalization is about setting up the ability for your project to be multilingual. It's not that it'll do it automatically. Let's say I wanted an English and Spanish version of the project. With the globalization plugin, I can do that, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't do it automatically. It sets up a system for your app to be translatable. If you would like to do that, you can leave it, and you'd have to read the documentation how. For us, we're not going to do it yet, so I'll remove globalization. Remind me what's in app browser. One of the first plugins we worked with. This is the one that creates a web browser inside of our project, and we do use that one. When we open external links, we open them in the browser. So we leave in that browser. We have media and media capture. This one is about playing sounds and recording sounds. Our project at the moment doesn't play any sounds when anything happens, but we could do it, so I'll leave media. But we're not going to capture media. We're not going to record media. If we take you know, a couple steps outside the box, we could set it up that when the person saves a class, there's also a field to save some sort of media, a picture of the instructor. 
or some audio note. But for the moment, we'll say we don't. We're not going to keep media capture. Network info. Uh, we'll leave that one. That one's about accessing online information, accessing websites and other online sources to check the network information. Splash screen, do we need that one? Yes, we have a splash screen that loads in the beginning of our app, so if we turn that off, we won't have a splash screen anymore. We'll leave it. We're not doing anything with vibration. We could, when something happens, like when you delete your database, it could vibrate. We'll remove it. We might add it back later if we, if we have time and such. The status bar, we're not using that one. That one is tapping into the status bar of the device. We're not using it. We'd have to look it up to see how it works. So no status bar. So deciding the ones we don't want, then what comes next is Cordova, plugin, remove, and then the name of the plugin, the internal name not the friendly name. If I want to remove the camera, I next type Cordova-plugin-camera. Cordova-plugin-camera. I want to remove camera first. Also, before you press enter, I would close the... I don't think there'll be a problem, but I'll close the config XML file. I'm going to close my files inside of Notepad. Make sure you save them. So I saved config file, I closed it, and then I'm going to run Cordova plugin remove the name of the plugin. And we can chain more than one. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But I'll do one first. So let it process it. Um, you can ignore, if you get a yellow warning here, you can ignore it. It's just telling you that Cordova plugin compat, the compatibility plugin is required for a few things. And eventually it'll work. And you can confirm Cordova plugin list. So I should have it should have removed one plugin. If there was an error, it would definitely tell you. It'd be red. If there was, it worked fine. It should just take you back to the command prompt. This yellow warning, we can ignore it. I'm going to check my list of plugins again. You should see camera is no longer there. I want to remove the next ones, and I can remove more than one by simply listing more than one. I have to start again with Cordova, plugin, remove. Next I said we would do battery, so that's Cordova dash plugin dash battery state, the status, space, I don't want contacts, So, oops, make sure you spell Cordova right. So, Cordova, plugin, remove. One plugin, space, the next plugin. Cordova, plugin, dash, contacts. Cordova, dash, plugin, dash, contacts. Space, Cordova, dash, plugin dash device motion space Cordova dash plugin dash file and then file transfer
So this is, a, this is a shortcut to remove several plugins at once, but of course if you make the mistake, I mistyped my second plugin and I wrote seven more plugins, well it's going to crash when it gets to a certain part. And then you have to check your spelling and run it again. File transfer, globalization, media capture, media capture, network information, vibration and status bar. doesn't fit here, but obviously you should understand what I'm doing. From my list of all my plugins, I'm simply doing quarter of a plugin remove and listing the plugins I don't want. These ones that I've chosen to remove, this does not mean you always do this, of course. If your app needs to capture media, obviously you wouldn't be removing it. If your project does use vibration, obviously you're not going to be removing it. Our project doesn't use vibration, so we're removing it. It makes it more efficient, it's a smaller file, and it's not going to bother people by asking that extra permission and confusing them or causing them worry. So I probably typed all of that right. I'll press enter. It'll tell me if I didn't. I'll put the list up in one moment again. We're concerned about size of some of these plugins. How do we check the size? Hmm. Rather than going through the pains of removing things and taking the that's a good point. Let me show you how you can check that. In our actual project, we have a plugins folder, and we can check the size of the whole folder. 4.5 megs right there. Oh, here we go once again, everyone. So it's, it's a long list, but it might be easier actually to see it like this. Cordova plugin list. I'm going to show you what I ended up with. This is what I have finished. These are the ones I want to keep, so maybe it makes more sense. These are the ones to keep instead of to remove. Whitelist, compatibility, console, device, device orientation, notification, file, geolocation, in-app browser, media, network info, and splash screen. Those are the ones I chose to keep. I'm going to take a screenshot of this and put it into the network folder. So in the network folder, I'm going to put in a, a graphic called Keep These Plugins, if you'd like a copy of that. Those are the ones we keep.
Alright, so did everyone uh, manage to remove those plugins? If you want to put a plugin back, you do Cordova, plugin add, and then you have to say the name of the plugin. Cordova dash plugin camera. Yes. Network information is one that will let us check the status of the network. So if our app relies on connecting to something online, we can first check are we online? And if we're not, then do something else.
space. Eu acho que eu vou fazer o meu. 
that is a new innovation that we do listen to our team. And then they added the next time to put up a platform and we put in there. And I think that would be a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would say. Yeah. So we know our, our app still is there. Okay, so uh, this step is um, optional, obviously, if in the beginning you never added the camera plugin or you never added, you know, the media plugin. But we're removing them because we started with a template that had uh, all the plugins active. The next step is to create that JKS file, that certificate. Now let's look at the handout that I gave you earlier, signing your final APK. Let's look at that handout from the network folder. If you came in a bit late, it's in the network folder, signing your final APK. Looking at that file, we have two sections. We have create your developer certificate, and we have build your, AP, your app for release. Before we get too far into this, can you do something for me? In your command prompt, can you type key tool? Raise your hand if you get an error like me. Key tool is not recognized. I need to check with, with everyone, so please try that. Type key tool in your command prompt and do you get an error? Looks like most people get an error. Okay, that's odd. You should not be getting that error. Uh, for some reason, the key tool command is not being found. It might not be in the computer's path or something. So there's an app built into Java that will let us create this certificate. My handout says we're going to use the key tool app to create a certificate. But our computer is not finding the key tool app. Make a note because here's where it is. If you open computer, open the C drive, C as in cat, local disk C, then you go into the program files. Now there's program files and x86. Depending on which version of Java you installed at home, if you install the 64-bit version, you're going to go into Program Files. If you install the 32-bit version, you're going to go into x86. You probably install the 64-bit version. Most modern computers are 64-bit. So in either case, inside of Program Files or x86, you will see a Java folder. Open that, you'll see Java. One of the requirements to create this Android app is Java. 
Java was a step to, in, to be installed a while ago when we first set up Cordova. So you should have Java. Open up Java. You might have different versions. I don't think it matters which version, but if you want to know exactly which, which version you need to use, in the command prompt you can type java space dash version. In my case, the one that Android or Cordova is looking at is 1.8.0.21. 1 1.8.0.21. Now there's a JDK and a JRE. We want the JDK. The Java Development Kit. This is telling us Java version, Java runtime, hotspot. Now, there's not much here that tells you exactly what's the right one, but the right one is the JDK. Whatever number it is here, it's your JDK. One is the runtime environment, JRE, and one is the actual like uh, key tool that we need. Uh, the actual difference, I'm not exactly sure, but the documentation says we need the JDK. So, from this list here, open up JDK 180121. Yours might be a different number, but it's the JDK 1.8x. Ignore the 1.7 and ignore the JREs. We want the JDK 1.8. And finally, inside of the bin folder, binaries, scrolling down, key tool. The problem is that if I double click it, it'll pop up for a moment and go away. So the way we actually use it is, well, we need to be in that folder in the command prompt. That was a long path that I took here. So here's a shortcut. We can open a command prompt in a particular folder by shift right clicking. If I back up one level to where it says bin, if you hold shift on the keyboard and then right click, open command window here. I want to open the command prompt in the bin folder. I could do cd this, cd that to get to it in my current command prompt. We just need to be in this folder for a moment. So once you find it, shift, right click, open command window here. And you're in the right folder. C, program files, Java, JDK, 180, bin. Now type key tool, and it should not give you an error. It will give you. It will say you're about to use the key tool. Mm -hmm. Hold shift first, and then right click, and you should get somewhere in the little menu there. Open command window. Okay, so the key tool uh, is what we use to create our JKS file. I think it stands for Java Key Store. Um, Java Key Store file, our, our certificate, what shows that this is us, we're this developer. The documentation we looked at previously when we went to cordova.apache.org and we looked at the documentation for Android, it says first look at the Android uh, documentation to create your JKS file. Well, I have the most important part of it in this handout. Uh, I didn't put it in this handout because I assumed our key tool worked, but as we all saw here, for whatever reason in our room here, the key tool tool doesn't work until you go into the folder like we just did here. 
this confirms that, yeah, here's your key tool, here's how to use it. So looking at my handout, I have start the node command prompt, navigate to your desktop, and then we're going to type a command. So we're not on the desktop, obviously, but we're in the right place, and we're on step number two. We're going to type key tool space dash gen key. This is going to generate a key. It's going to create a, a special certificate, space dash v for verbose, give me back a lot of feedback, or else it would be silent. Space dash key store, space. This is where you type the name of your file. Uh, this, as I said earlier, you can create this for real and then save this file and keep it. It's important. Or you can make it up, it's fake, and then make the real one later once you understand how it works. But then here I would type in my last name dot JKS. Don't type jones.jks, it's just an example. You would type your last name or make it up. Key tool, we're generating a key, verbose. The name of our key store file is jones.jks, space. Further in my handout here I have dash alias, space, your last name again. A JKS file can have more than one user, more than one alias. One JKS file can have three developers' certificates or credentials in the JKS file. So I'm saying I'm going to create an alias. I'm going to create a key in this keychain for me. This can be anything you want. It can be called developer1. Space dash key ALG. This is the algorithm space RSA. We have different ways to encrypt this thing. We're using the RSA algorithm. Space key size 2048, 2 kilobytes. Space validity. We're going to create this certificate that is going to be active for some amount of time. Uh, I think the units are days. It's going to be 10,000. The documentation says when you create a certificate, the Google documentation says when you create a certificate, make sure you create one for at least 25 years. This is about 30 years. Just rounding it up, you know, 10,000 days. So this assumes you're going to be a developer for the next 10,000 days. So all of this I'm getting it from my handout that I put in the network folder. This is going to create a file with a key inside of it of your last name. The file is named what you type right here. Write that down if you're going to use this file later. You can create a file again later, but it's harder to edit an existing file. So if you misspelled your last name inside of this file, it's a little harder to fix that. It might be better off just creating a new one. But creating a new certificate every time means you're a brand new developer. And the app that you released last year now is being released by a new developer, and that, that'll confuse the app stores. If all some things, not the password, for example, that we will assign in a moment, but some things we will be able to look at the alias and such. But the most important thing is the password, and you cannot see that. At this point, go ahead and press enter, and then it'll ask us to create a password. It's going to ask us for two passwords. One for the key store file, the JKS file. So whatever password you want here, there's really no limit. I guess it could be ABC. Oops, that one's too short. Must be at least six characters. Okay, there's a minimum of six characters. I'm going to enter a key store file. Re-enter it. You can't see it. And then here's the part that it's going to ask for various 
aspects of you as a company. I've got it written right here in my handout, but it's saying who are you and your stats and all of that. Yes. So we're creating this special file. It's got your credentials. The first thing says, what's your first and last name? So I would, you know, make it up if you want. Organizational unit is basically your job description. You could put developer. Name of your organization. Jones apps. That's what I've got in my config file. This stuff here could be completely fake, but it's going to be harder to change later, so just whatever you want. No, it's not frozen. It's not showing you how many apps and how many characters you have. So, When it asks you for your password, it's super secure. It won't even tell you how many characters you wrote. So,
can include the password. Okay. Uh, you can use the same password. And I guess you need to change the check the rest. Just to restore it with some other. Because we are not sure that right now, but we could come to the pictures we want to do for the kids' day. Right, so let me finish mine here, and eventually, when this is done, all that we needed to do with this is create this JKS file. Let's see what's next. My, my organization. Okay, I'll just make up an organization. Name of my city, San Diego, sure. Uh, name of the state, CA California, makes sense. Two-letter country code, US. Then it's going to check. Okay. So, uh, first name, last name is good. Uh, organizational unit, organization, locality, etc. If these are not correct, you can type no and then try it again. If it is correct, I would type yes. So on my handout, I would be looking at number eight. Confirm all looks good, type yes, then press enter. It says it's generating the key based on what I type right there, 10,000 days, etc. Okay. So there's a password for the actual JKS file, and then there's a password for the key. So there's a password just to access the key store, the keychain. And then there's a password to access this key to sign as a developer. That's the second password. It can be the same password if you want. That's fine. It's more secure with different passwords. But for this, I'll use the same password. I can't see the length of the password, but I know what I typed. Created my JKS file. My handout says it did it on the desktop, but it didn't for us because we had to get into the bin folder of the JDK. The path of this tool is missing from the system, so we couldn't create the JKS file onto the desktop. We created it inside of this folder, and if you look in your bin folder, in my case, there it is, jones.jks. Whatever the name of yours that you typed, you should see it in the folder, the bin folder. Move it to the desktop now. Inside of the bin folder, go inside of the bin folder in the Java JDK folder, and in here you'll find your you'll find your file. I created a Jones.jks, whatever yours was. You'll see it in here. Move it to your desktop now. Jones JKS. What I have here, it will process and create your certificate file, lastname.jks. Now that you have your lastname.jks file, store it in a safe place. You will need to use this in all your future apps. It validates you as the creator of your apps. Make a backup, then make a backup of the backup. So if you're going to do this for real, this is my certificate that shows these are my apps. I want to save that somewhere because we're going to release our app next week or whatever. We, ch we release version 2. We need to use the same JKS file to say, this is my app, here's version 2. If I make a brand new JKS file, what will happen is Google will say, why is smith.jks trying to vouch for this app that was first signed by jones.jks? 
And for educational purposes, it, it won't matter. But for your real app, it definitely matters. Let's pause here for our break and make sure everyone was able to create this file. Make sure you've got this JKS file on your desktop and, and flash drive, actually. And we'll pause for 10 minutes. We'll be back at 7.45.